it says me it should be wait some seconds, but now it's there. Can you are live now? Hello, <laughs> hello to everybody. Uh, so uh, Simon, you will say something, or is it impossible for you? I, I can speak. Uh, okay. But I don't know. If, I don't know if you can hear me very well. Uh, my internet connection's gone down uh, a, a real inopportune moment. And so I'm on my mobile phone trying to give Hans instructions how to run the webinar. So welcome, everybody. Uh, tell Hans where you're joining from in the sidebar. And uh, Hans is going to run his presentation, and I'll try and get on for the Q&A later. Uh, but for now, I'll just uh, leave you with Hans, OK? Yes, th thank you very much, <laughs> Simon. Of course, you see, sometimes uh, technical uh, support is a miracle, but I think we will try to hand it, and I hope that everybody can hear us. Of course, I see there are so many people around the world here today in our webinar. Thank you, Simon, for organizing everything. I know that you are very famous and well-known around the world, and it's a great pleasure for me to stay together here with you and with all the participants. What is the topic? Of course, I will directly uh, jump in uh, to, to that, what we are doing and what is our topic. Our topic today is food defense in transportation. And uh, I will tell you a little bit about our association work. We are ENFIT is a nonprofit association with a lot of people working there or members in this association. They are having high interest in supply chain safety and food safety. And uh, yeah, so maybe together with you, we have a good communication. And uh, please later let us know to Simon or to myself um, how is it is. If you have any question, you can come every time to us by email, whatever you find here. My email address is filipovsky at enfit.eu. Some words to myself. Of course, my name is Hans Dieter Filipowski. I'm a process engineer, studied in university in Hamburg, lived since eight years in Brussels in the middle of the world. Of course, that says a lot, lot of companies or people <laughs> around the world, but I'm one of them. And I'm dealing more than 20 years with food safety, more at the beginning from the engineering aspect to build cleaning station. I have a lot of experience with building cleaning station, but I also have a lot of experience with all the doing of cleaning station, transport, hygiene. And that was the reason that I founded together with uh, a lot of other people 20 years ago, this nonprofit association ENFIT. And we are happy that you are, have a lot of interest. And so let's jump into this presentation. So where I have to click, yes. What is the responsibility of the uh, of all these um, uh, food business operators around that? What can be the risk in the transport container design? Um, what is suitable for food or not? Problems with loading and unloading, with compressed air, fraud, food fraud in in transportation. Maybe it's an interesting aspect for you. Of course, normally you know food fraud about that somebody is manipulating the product itself. We are talking about food fraud during transport, uh, making wrong labeling of transport containers, whatever. Uh, yeah. We're talking about uh, tank cleaning programs, container drying, food defense, ceilings. What does it mean? How we should protect the transport units against sabotage, manipulation or contamination? Uh, food defense driver identification and trustful cleaning documents in ENFIT HQF certification. So that is the topics and I will give you a short introduction to uh, what is ENFIT doing. ENFIT is developing also international guidelines and maybe some of you have got one of our guidelines and that shows all the risk in the supply chain. Started with uh, loading unloading the transport itself, the usability of the transport container, is it usable for, uh, for food or not, the cleaning. Um, somebody has made a lot of noise here. Maybe you can close your mic. Is it on your side, Simon, or is it maybe one other? That should be helpful. Of course, it's a lot of noise. 
and uh, we are developing these in international working groups uh, together with people from the production side, from logistics sites, from cleaning stations, so that we have all these experts' knowledge on board and to develop this. If somebody of you is interested and has not in the moment these guidelines, you can send me an email and you will get it free of charge. That is some of our cooperation partners. We are working together with GMP Plus for the feed standards. We have to, uh, worked also with DNV for the certification or Credit Austria. And we are working together with the company Biogvision, of course, that is a company where we build up the blockchain cloud technology. What is the aim? Of course, we are looking for that to find together with you ways uh, to protect on one hand the health of the consumers and on one hand to reduce recalls for producers. A recall is not only that it costs a lot of money, <laughs> I think it makes a lot of sleepless nights and it means that it can also damage real companies and it can be forced uh, on every producer side. You know, all these questions about salmonellas in chocolate, um, listeria in, in different products and so on. And always is a question from where are these products coming or this contamination comes? And is it a contamination maybe done by non doing the right things, maybe in the cleaning of transport units or some problems in the factories? Or is it maybe coming from outside? And that is the question what we will discuss and talk about. What is the supply chain? Of course, when I ask people, please tell me what is your understanding about the supply chain? I got a lot of different answers and <laughs> I know that everybody has another understanding about the supply chain. Of course, what we are talking today is that we are talking about the food, feed and chemical supply chain, but our focus today is absolutely on food. And it shows that there is a connective uh, connectivity between on the left side, the raw material producer, the primary production, and you see some of these raw materials have to come to the primary production by transport and transport units. I will call it transport units. And when I'm talking about transport units, I mean in, in, in real life, road tanker, uh, silo trailers, tank containers, but also IBCs and cooling trucks. That is that what we are used for the transport. And on the other hand, then we have a primary production, maybe for example, a dairy, they are uh, producing uh, of these milk. And on another hand, there's a secondary production, maybe for the milk powder, a milk powder plant. And these products also are then ingredients to produce a real product, maybe a chocolate bar, uh, some, some other foods, whatever. You, you know it much better than me. Of course, you are uh, most of you are, I think, from the production side, for real from factories. And in all these different steps, we have always the connective the connectivity between all the producers, the raw material producers, the primary producers, the secondary producers, and the end producers. We need always a transportation be between. And that is that where we are focused when we understand, or myself, I understand when I build cleaning stations, I talk to my uh, contractors and I ask them, please, now you have a nice uh, cleaning stations. I built it with my team at that time. Of course, I have sold this company 10 years ago out um, so that I can more focus here on this work in Enfit and uh, also on the work of digitization. Uh, and I asked uh, th these clients, I uh, said, what are you doing there? And how do you are doing that? And my impression at that time was that everybody is doing what he thinks by himself, what can be do go good or not. And so I get more and more the impression that this is a private standard market. And for me as an engineer, it was completely astonished. I thought two and two is four and not 3.5 or 4.8 or something like this. There's an exact rule and requirements, but I was very shocked when I understand and realize that in these fields of transportation, everybody is doing what he wants. And in the main thing, everybody looks to reduce the cost. And you know, when you have a transport, transporting something from A to B, 
uh, you need a driver that costs money. You need petrol that costs money. You have to pay for the out that costs also money. The only part where you can be more flexible, <laughs> the question is, is it good or not? <laughs> I will say it's not so good. But the only part where you can maybe do more or less is a part of the cleaning. And the main problem what I see is when I discuss with people from quality management and logistic management in big companies, big producers is that they hand out the contracts to the logistic companies and transport companies in one package. They say, do a transport from A to B. And including that is to prepare the transport unit for the next load in the proper way. But nobody has specified what is their understanding about what can be a proper cleaning or not. So that means at the end of the day, to reduce costs from the side of from the view of the transport or logistic companies, that is a part where you can reduce the service, you can reduce them cost, and you get at the end of the day a little bit more money. I can understand all these companies, they are fighting for their profit. Of course, everybody who's be dealing in business has to make profit. Otherwise, he will lost and gone from the market. So that's understandable. But it's important that the producers have a clear understanding what they are requires from their service providers. And that for that, we are working to make this absolutely clear and to show them how we can do that. There's a big question in the responsibility of the producers. Of course, you know, as a producer, you are a food business operator and you are responsible for your product. You are also responsible for your products when you have a problem with the raw material. Of course, independent from where these problems come. Of course, you are always directly in the contact to the consumers. And when there somebody becomes ill or something or damaged or something like this, then they come back to the producer and that is a big problem for the producer. And the question is in the European law, you know, I'm living in Brussels, I'm a German and I know very well the European law. I know also the law of FDA, SFDA and so on. It's nearly the same. Everybody is talking about that, that the logistic company is also a part of the supply chain. And he has the same responsibility as a food business operator. Of course, yes, he is taking a product from A, transported in his own trucks or containers, and unloaded at the client of the producer, of the raw material producer. So in the understanding and in the, um, in the law, the transport company is also part of the supply chain and has a special responsibility. But... The understanding of transport on logistic companies is completely different. Of course, when I talk to logistic companies, of course, now it's changing in the last year. But in the beginning, when we started with this ENFIT work, the people told us, said, what, what have we to do with the quality of the product? Of course, we are doing only a transport from A to B, but we are not the producer. We are not responsible for the product. That's a key question of the producer itself. But that's wrong, and we are working really hard on this to make it absolutely visible and sure. What is with the cleaning station? Of course, the transport company is the owner of the transport unit, and this transport unit normally is not cleaned by themselves. Of course, they transported something around the world, yeah, hundreds of kilometers between, so that they are needed another service provider like cleaning stations, they are looking for that, that these are, are proper cleaned. But a cleaning stations work like a hairdresser. Of course, if the client coming said, oh, please, please cut my hair uh, only uh, without any washing, without any glass of champagne and no coloring, no drying, then it's a low service and costs you maybe a low margin, low, uh, low uh, price. If somebody enters to the uh, hairdresser and said, please, coloring, drying, washing, cutting, something like this, and a glass of champagne, you have to pay more, but you get more service. And the cleaning station is working the same way. Of course, the client, the logistic company or transport company is entering the, uh, the cleaning station and said, please spill it with water. And then these cleaning stations will not say, okay, 
that is not enough. Of course, you have to do more. No, they are working like a hairdresser. They're doing that what the client wants. And the client will pay only for that. And that is the problem what we have in the supply chain, that there is not a really understanding about how important it is to, to clean and to do all these things. On the other hand, when we are talking about food defense, it's also this big question, of course, about after the cleaning, a transport unit should be protected against manipulation or sabotage with seals to, to all the opening, the manholes, uh, the, the valves and so on, where you can damage something or maybe inject and, and poison or something like this or a contamination. Uh, that should be protected. And when you see later, I will come to this point back, how that works in practice, uh, it's very crazy what you have seen and you will understand that this is not really working. The risk of the transport container itself, of course, the transport containers has a many manholes, has a many uh, valves and tubes and pipes and all these things you get uh, maybe an impression about this, um, but I'd be sure most of you have not really seen a transport unit really how many different paths are there and where is a contamination possible or a manipulation. So that is very important for each who is dealing with these topics so that you have the possibilities to understand how is the construction, the design of a transport unit to understand where are all these critical points? And when we are looking here, maybe that is the typical European. I, I know in America, these trucks look sometimes a little bit bigger <laughs> than here in this small Europe. Uh, you see that is a truck for liquids and you see it's a Enfit uh, logo is also on site. And on the left side, you find a silo. The silo is for the transport of granulars or powders. And it shows that there's a lot of openings, uh, manholes, uh, caps, and so on. And all these should also not only clean, but it should also then protect it against the manipulation or sabotage. That is a very important step. And on the other hand, when we are talking about food defense, don't forget, we are not talking only about manipulation or sabotage like done by tourism. No, we are talking also about to protect these transport or transport units against a contamination. And there's a lot of spaces where a contamination can be done. Maybe in an active contamination, somebody will doing something to, uh, to damage the other side, the producer or maybe his brand or something like this. Or maybe the damage my or the contamination with microorganisms by a bad cleaning. So that is the reason that both or all these three things belongs together. We are not talking only about the damaging by tourism or attacks and manipulation. We are talking also about the uh, protection against uh, contamination by a bad cleaning or by a wrong cleaning, whatever. All this is in the main vision to protect you as a producer, to protect you then as your customers, to make sure that you are not damaged by all these uh, things. You see, for example, here that is a silo truck. Uh, on the side, you will find uh, some of these tubes that is for to install inside the tubes for loading and unloading. And on the top, you can see a lot of different things like valves, like gaskets, like manholes, like um, uh, other things here, what is installed or what is in these trailers and often from outside not to see. And then we are talking about the ceiling, the ceiling of the transport units. And you see only here some examples about ceilings in different uh, colors with different numbers and uh, on different places. And the main question is always who decides on which place you should put a seal for to protect it or to show a manipulation. Um, a seal is often normal, a plastic seal. There are some seals from metal also, but they are not used for these uh, daily truck transport. 
Um, and the seals make only possible that you can see if somebody has manipulated. Of course, then it's damaged and then you can see it. Or maybe it's left and then you should be careful when there is a missed seal. Or maybe there's a seal change with another number. And the key question is, how can you as a receiver or uh, yeah, m mostly as a receiver, check is that the right seal or not? Or is that something changed? And I will tell you later some stories about this changing and what is going on. And you see here also a lot of um, auxiliaries of those trucks. And you can understand, you must not be a really, an, not an engineer, but all these stuff, what you see here on those pictures, make it on one hand not easy to clean it in a proper way. Of course, all these scarves and, and valves and cups and so on and so on. And on the other hand, it gives a lot of possibilities to manipulate something when those trucks are on the parking place, waiting, the driver is sleeping or whatever, yeah? Uh, the other part is here inside of uh, these trucks, you see it on the left side, a pump, on the right side, a button valves. All these things you can't see from outside, but all these places are the places where a contamination can get connected and can damage the next load, maybe your product, and can contaminate your product. We have some different things here, maybe like uh, trailers for liquids with one, two, three different chambers, <laughs> but it's fantastic. All these chambers are in one line, yeah, so in one tube. That means uh, if you have in these different chambers, different products and make your unloading, you get a contamination. Uh, of course, everything has to, to move away or move uh, out by one pipe. And that is very fantastic construction, but that's uh, not, uh, it's, it's, it's often to find. Another point is that people are the producers of tanks and uh, trailers are produced uh, tankers with also one to three chambers and with three separate red lines. That sounds in the first step very good, but then bring it together with a connector with this adapter to one point to one unloading point, and then you have the same problems as that. And when the transport companies maybe deliver uh, an, uh, an um, oil, uh, maybe to the first uh, receiver and maybe a chocolate or a milk to another receiver. Also, everything is then mixed and nobody will clean between the unloading one and the unloading two, the, the, the pipes. So that is uh, another big problem. And it's very important to, to know for you as a producer, how you can make sure that you are really have the possibilities to check your transport companies, your logistic companies, your service providers for that. And what is the risk in the transport container and what does it mean suitable for food? Outside, the transport units look often very nice. Yeah, nice color, nice logo, everything looks fine. But how does those transport units look from inside? You can have pittings, you can have corrosion, you can have maybe damaged uh, weldings and they are repaired and not good repaired, only to give you some examples how does it looks, or maybe the tubes from the wrong material, it's not uh, food uh, suitable, uh, all these things. And we as Enfit has developed a certification scheme or inspection scheme where those transport units can test it or inspect it every two and a half year to find out is it longer suitable for food or not. And that is very important. In Europe, for example, it's very crazy, of course, there are logistic companies driving 30 years with the same trailer and nobody checked inside, is it really suitable for food or not? And that is also a part of food defense, yeah? how you can protect as a producer yourself against all these things what you not can see. This is the example for if there are transport unit regularly inspected, they will get this inspection seal and you as a producer later with the digital solution, you can directly see is this transport unit inspected 
is it suitable for food and how long is it suitable for the next inspection date and so on so yet so that you get all the information and from our side we can say you it's very important that you have all these things under control of course otherwise you take some problems into the factory contamination in your factory and later it's impossible then to complain it and uh, make it visible for that so but then we have another topic it's called risk with the compressed air when we are doing the unloading with uh, of liquids or powder material with a compressor and when you are seeing here of course that is um, european style of course you see on the trucks they are um, pulling the trailers we have on these trucks we call it compressors for for air to make the unloading and only when you look at these photos i have no idea what is your feeling but but i have no idea about technologies <laughs> i would say it looks miracle it looks dirty it looks uh, not very very nice so that i'm not have a good feeling with that of course what is going on of course it, uh, the compressor is sucked all the air around <laughs> this compressor driven by the engine the the petrol driven engine of the truck and suck all the air inside including the uh, the, uh, the the air of the truck yeah, coming out of the machine bring it together comprimate it blow it into the silo and do the unloading and i'll be sure that of this air this ambient air is not very clean of course it's it can be wet of course it's it's raining it can be dry and uh, dusty it can be have a lot of other things everything what is around this compressor is suck to the system compressed and bring it in directly contact with the product and then when you blow it into your storage silos you have maybe also the contamination by this way there are some companies producers started with their own a recycled high pressure air and then they connect it to the silo and use it by themselves and when you look in your production site and then you look at for your compressed air system you will see that there's a lot of technology from carbon co uh, carbon filter um, cooling uh, apparatus and so on and so on to to recycle these air so that you have a very perfect air condition but with this system you can be sure that is a dirt around the truck what you're stuck in and uh, you have also sometimes problems with with oil phase in that maybe coming from the engine of the uh, driving uh, trucks and that can also bring you then uh, oil into your products you see here that for example that is to clean the air with a microfilter it looks in the first step looks nice but this microfilter is not uh, possible for them to filter maybe gas uh, oil what is later condensate in the product or it's uh, yeah this microfilter is very rough and a lot of transport units uh, uh, have no microfilter in why of course one of these microfilters when you buy it new costs something about 350 or 450 euros and when you have logistic companies they are fighting about each dollar or euro to reduce the cost they said okay move this filter away of course he has only disturbed the process of course the process is needed longer when you have a filter inside of course you have then uh, pressure loss and uh, move it away and have no filter inside and all these parts are parts where you can do also a manipulation yeah you can screw up these these caps here can do a manipulation and this is not really protected and on the other hand it can be damage your product about uh, this when it's missed and it's not really under function and not really cleaned so food fraud when we are talking about food fraud then in my case i not speaking about uh, to to mix a product with a cheaper other material but looks uh, nearly the same like a milk powder or something um and it's maybe wood <laughs> 
So I'm talking about the fraud, about the conditions of the suitability of a, a transport, a food transport container. There is, I have seen an FDA, a European Commission and so on, there's always a regulation that a transport container for food should be only used for food, not for chemicals, not for feed, not to have cross-contamination by this way. But there are some tricky guys on the road. They have here for this example, nur für Lebensmittel, that means foodstuffs only, on these tubes for the hoses and you can open one screw and can change it and then it's not to see and you can transport it something maybe like in biodiesel or something or other chemicals and later when you change the product uh, then you can move it back and it looks like uh, nur für Lebensmittel or foodstuff only transport unit but that is criminal that is fraud it's criminal And it also is a high risk for you as a producer. You see this here, that is absolutely horrible. What I have seen, this picture I have made myself uh, two or three years ago. And it shows that is a, a labeling, food stuff only, that is a white label. And put on <laughs> this category three material, not for human consumption. That is then when you uh, the transport company transported maybe um, waste from the slaughterhouse, what can be contaminated and so on, and is not for human consumption. Of course, it's it's written here on this label, and they put it clever in that way so that you can read category three material stuff only. But <laughs> that is nothing where you uh, can can joke about that. That is very hard stuff. That is hard criminal act, and that is not uh, not needed for us. I think. Here are some other examples. Examples with a magnetic sticker, what you can move away and and put on. Or on the left side here, you will find nur für Lebensmittel, foodstuff only, and cut three material also on on different places. You can see that is here on the, on the green bars, and here on top is nur für Lebensmittel or here that is uh, sticked on with a um, uh, flexible band. And here, for example, you find here also a truck with nur für Lebensmittel, foodstuff only. Of course, I marked it. I will not blame these people directly, but uh, it's not acceptable. And when they are jump into the cleaning stations, they at first have to fill out a paper What are the three last previous loads? And here you can see it's glucose, it's uh, soya oil and glucose here on the right side. One, two, three. That are the last three loadings. And later when they enter the cleaning stations, the staff of the cleaning stations open the manholes and they smell and said, that smells like petroleum. <laughs> it cannot be uh, glucose. And they asked the driver and the driver said, oh, no, don't don't worry about that. Clean it. Of course, I have to move to the next client for the next loading state. I should load a palm oil and don't worry about that. It smells a little bit different, but clean it. And the staff said, no, we will not clean it. Please show us the transport papers, the CMR in, in Europe. And he said, no, he has no CMR, he has no transport papers. And they said, okay, then we can't clean it. And then he jumped to his driver cabin, comes back with these transport papers. And on the transport papers, you find the information that is uh, biodiesel. And biodiesel is uh, nothing what is to eat. Yeah, it's, uh, It has bio, that means it's a diesel from sunflower. Um, but it's nothing what you can eat or put on your salad. Yeah, it's it's a chemical. And uh, then they said, no, we can't clean it. And you can be sure that this driver, when he left the cleaning stations, he entered to the next cleaning station and one of them will clean them. Of course, they know these problems often. Of course, 98% of the cleaning station belongs to logistic companies. So They are dealing with the same things and have a special understandings about those things. But it's criminal, it's forbidden, it's not allowed, it's not under the law, and it's uh, yeah, not acceptable. That is uh, this, the same result of that. 
What is the risk in cleaning stations itself? Uh, there are often nice papers, yeah? Looking on the first view, very, very uh, interesting. So uh, original, um, like an authority paper, yeah? But when you're looking, of course, you will find those things often in uh, Europe. Uh, they are talking about cleaning coats. Maybe, for example, P10 is called for hot water, more than 60 degrees. Uh, F50 meets food cleaning agent. That is maybe special required for the food cleaning. F01 means cleaning with drinking water. And E36 is drying with a temperature more than 60 degrees. All these coats, of course, these coats are developed by an another association it's not it's our competitors of course we have two different point of views to the market and to the question of food safety but that is that what has been common the last 25 years but now it's changing of course the people understand more and more from the production side that the uh, the requirements and the development of enfit is a completely different way of course we are working in the interest of the food industry and not in the interest of the logistic companies. But on the other hand, we tell also the logistic companies, when you will be successful in the future, it should be better for you and for your business when you are open, when you are transparent, when you show your client what you're doing. And don't do the things they are not allowed and they are not uh, give you a good performance. Of course, it can be damage your business. And there are the first um, transport companies, they understand these. And we have done a lot of certification of cleaning stations under the ENFIT certification scheme. It's called HQF certification for high quality food. And the first cleaning stations, uh, something around 20 we have certified last year, are understand that in the future, the vision to be open, to be transparent, to be honest is more important than to make all everything cheap and at the end of the day we when we are talking to the food industry we said the best is to connect your account of recalls together with the account of transport cost of course the, often there's an argument to say of course uh, we are we, we can't pay more for a transport but when you have two possibilities, yeah, pay maybe a little bit more for a standardized cleaning of the transport unit. It can help you to reduce maybe on the other hand, millions over millions what you have to pay later for recalls, um, depending to that, that you have in bring in into your factories contamination by the bad transport hygiene and bad conditions. And that kills you on the other hand and costs you millions. So it makes sense to connect it both accounts together and see that it maybe can be a good investment to look for the honest transport units, to, like, to, to look for companies that yeah, follow standards and rules. Maybe you have to pay 10 or 20 or 50 or 100 euros more for the transport. But when you, on the other hand, save the millions for recalls and you have no idea from where the salmonella and the chocolate later is coming, then it can be make much, much more sense to invest a little bit more in that and to reduce the cost of recalls in a big, big range. That is that what we are can say also. And this, in the first step, nice looking codes. Yeah, so it's uh, language independent <laughs> that says at the end of the nothing, of the day, nothing. But what does it mean? P10, hot water, 60 degrees. Where is the cleaning done? How is the duration time? What is the result? That is said what is normally working in factories. And when you are talking about sanitation, uh, food safety, and so on, you're always looking to have procedure, uh, uh, real procedures with real steps and possibilities to measure a result. And here, it shows only nice, but it looks nice, but it says at the end of the day, nothing. And there's an interesting sentence on all these documents. Of course, we are now working hard on that to move these documents and these non-standard, we called it non-standard, out of the market. 
and we are very uh, fighting hard for that and to make our system more well known. There's an in interesting sentence on these papers in small written letter. One let the first sentence said that the cleaning station and the driver, the driver normally is not during the cleaning inside of the cleaning station, uh, and he is drinking a coffee. He um, is only shown what they have done, spilling with water, use an alcoholic data dance or something like this. And the second sentence means the track is clean under the um, under the specification of these uh, our competitor, competitor, competitor association. And when you look at that, what does it mean? The tank is clean. It means when you after the cleaning, open the manhole and look inside of the con container uh, and you see no visible dirt, then it's clean. There's no discussion about what is with the tube, what is with the pipe, what is with the valves, all these points you can't see. And you know, all the points you can't see normally are not easy to clean. And that is a completely uh, in opposite uh, position. And we are fighting for that to remove these non-standards from the market and to bring in the standards what we have developed together with producers, with uh, logistic companies, with cleaning stations, to, to bring it to the right situation. And here, for example, later you can see it when you get the download of this document, all other different types of um, non-saying papers. And we are fighting for that, that we have a real standard that you can follow and then you have a clear result at the end of the day. The staff of the cleaning station is also not only for the cleaning, it's also a weak point when we are talking about food defense. Why? Who controls what the staff is to doing? Yeah, maybe they clean, but they have also the possibility after the cleaning to damage maybe a tank or to contaminate it and to make a sabotage. There's no real regulation how to handle this, how to make sure that this cannot be possible. Or when you see different cleaning stations, I show you only some pictures. I think these pictures say everything. Of course, that is not the quality what you normally use in your factories, what you are normally is working in your factories. Here, for example, on the right side, metal, um, metal from the screw, it's from the filter system in a silo where you transported floor or milk powder, something like this, or here, it's, it's a completely dirty filters from a compressor. And here the people tried to, to clean uh, these, these pipe with a brush, but the brush lost a lot of his plastic uh, here. And so it's not a good idea to do it in that way. And coming back to the question of sealing and protecting against sabotage and manipulation, when you see that those cups here from, from the boxes where the hose is inside, have this big loop, you have two points. On one hand, you can open this, this uh, cap here, maybe some centimeters, and then you can maybe inject something in the tube. So no, nobody can um, measure it before unloading. It's only the contamination on the way during the unloading by the contamination in the tube and then into the tank or the silo. And on the other hand, it's easy here to cut this uh, seal, make this box completely open, do your manipulation, and then bring these together, the, this, take it away here, what you have cut, bring this new again, and it looks like a normal seal without any manipulation. And you see also on silo trucks, there's a, uh, a lot of air diffusers and so on and so on. And all these places should be sealed. Otherwise, you can manipulate this, remove these cups, and you will find a lot of silos. They have maybe three, four, five seals, and all these other parts are completely open and easy to manipulate. Here you see also the, the cleaner, also a weak point for that, and the cleaning station and the staff, how they work, in, in which condition they work, and what they are doing see how to clean tubes. Most of the cleaning of transport units, 50% is handwork. Handwork means 
it's depending to that how the staff is trained and what the cleaning stations want or what the transport company orders. And that is a uh, high risk. When this is not really specified, then the result is very open at the end of the day. You find also here how it looks with valves, with um, gaskets, with uh, any caps here. And there are all the possibility of a contamination. Also the contamination when somebody will damage maybe the factory or his contractor, whatever, he can do an easy manipulation for that also. Here we have drying system. Often these trailers and containers are dried after the cleaning. They should be dried for the next product. And you can see on the left side, how does it look and in, in which way it looks. It looks honestly terrible, really terrible. And that is one of the fantastic cleaning station what I have seen last year in Poland. It looks like a garage where you can change your oil of your car. But this is a cleaning station where they also cleaned food trucks. And I think it needs not so much fantasy to understand what is the understanding about cleaning and what is the understanding about hygiene. You see, they have also a cleaning station. They, they call it a cleaning station. I think it's, <laughs> I think it's very <laughs> terrible what I see. It's, it's never a cleaning station, but they do cleaning outside uh, under the air and uh, with all these stupid things here, what you can see on these pictures. So the defense, the food defense is a question of the right ceiling. I told you we are talking about manipulation, what can be done by the driver, what can be done by the people from the cleaning station, what can be done only by not working under the real standards to make sure that a transport unit is very really, uh, good protected and proper cleaned. Uh, the normal way is that everybody decided by it's himself how many seals you need for a truck. There is no official uh, organization that is checking transport units and saying, okay, this transport unit needs 36 seals or this maybe 28 or something like this. So that is the reason that we are together with the uh, association of the food inspectors of Germany, bring out a position paper and we are working as the association on that to make it sure that a transport unit should be come into an inspection center where are trained people and these people can decide it which parts should be sealed that you can protect this transport units against manipulation or sabotage so make sure how does it work you see the history or the, the daily thing is that somebody brings on seals maybe the cleaning station is one part after the cleaning the transport units are sealed or should be sealed by food defense law and the receiver should check the seals numbers. But these numbers of the seals, of course, all these seals have unique ID numbers on, is by written by hand on a transport paper. You can see here some examples. And the, the key question is, who can really 100% make sure that there is no uh, mistake in reading, understanding, and writing? I have no idea uh, how good you are on those things, but when I take 10 phone numbers and write it down, I'll be sure on three I have some mistakes with some uh, numbers what I change or something like this. It's not so easy to, to read all these small written numbers and so on. And the end of the day means that these people, they are control that are often not really able to control it. And for that, it's needed that there is a digital system. You see another track is very fantastic. What I have seen on the Autobahn by myself, I think two and a half years ago, uh, I find this track with a lot. Uh, I think he is maybe a seal uh, fetishist or something like this. Of course, he has seals from chemical companies, from food companies and so on and mixed everything so that I be not really sure that all these things working in a good way. Please give me a short second. I have to move on 
my electric cable here for my computer. Otherwise, I will lost you also via lost Simon, and I will not go this risk. You see for another example here with different seals. And yeah, what is that what we are doing? I will move forward, of course, I see us, it's five minutes left. We are doing the certification and the training for cleaning stations to bring them on the way for the proper cleaning. Then they are certified by these HQF, high quality food standards of NFIT. We are, have a three phase certification scheme. That means that we are not only make a questionnaire. Of course, it was an audit. We have also the, the control of the technology of the cleaning technology. Are they able to clean, uh, their, the trucks with the right temperature? Did they have a steam generator with right temperature and so on and so on? And we're doing the training and validation for the staff so that they know what they are doing. Of course, remember 50% of the cleaning is done by hand. And depending to the score of these uh, certification team, they can get the quality seal basic plus high quality or excellent. And this seal, this quality seal is also later printed out in the NFIT certificate what we generated. You can see we have also developed a kosher cleaning and a halal cleaning. That is very important, of course, that is missed in all these last years. And we have here some explanation about that. So when somebody follows the kosher rules for kosher cleaning, he gets this blue label. And when he follows the halal cleaning, then he will get the green halal label in our NFIT cleaning certificate. And that shows uh, everybody that these things has been done. You will find also on our NFIT website, nfit.eu, the cleaning programs, we have developed a real program, not only codes saying nothing, where you can see on the left side, maybe the, the program P200 or P200A, A means and GMO or allergen cleaning for liquids with low uh, viscosity, liquids with high viscosity, kosher halal zip cleaning. And on the right side, you will find the cleaning procedures for powders and granulas in silo trucks. And then you will get all information about the cleaning procedure. That means the cleaning is between 57 minutes in the average is 85 and the maximum is 115. That is the example for the kosher cleaning. All this information you can find on our website for all these different uh, uh, requirements for the right cleaning. For example, I will move uh, strong forward. And then you can see here the range. And you see also that easy cleaning costs not so much money. You see here we have put in the, the uh, average of uh, European markets here, then uh, cleaning what is more proper. And depending to that, what needs, what you as a producer needs, of course, not each product, what you produce is sensitive. You can decide it by yourself in which range you need your quality and what you, what you are ready to invest. We have also uh, developed this NFIT by Vision blockchain technology. It make, makes possible to identify the transport units with maybe the question how many seals added on a seal plan, where should be sealed. Uh, the seals are scannable with a smartphone and you get also all information about the cleaning, cleaning certificate, cleaning procedures, directly digital by the identification of the transport unit by the GID, we call it global identification number for transport units. And you will find all these things on our website and I will say thank you. Of course, now it's 4.59. I think I'm just in time here with my presentation. And I will say thank you to all that you are moving together with me for this interesting, hope, hopefully interesting hour for you. And I will thank you for Simon, who I can see on the screen at the moment. So that looks nice that your computer is working again, Simon. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Hans. Um, yeah, uh, I had an internet um, outage, but 
<laughs> back on now, although it's not very strong. Um, have you got time for a couple of questions, Hans, before you go? Yeah, of course, uh, clear. <laughs> okay. So a question from Roxanne. Is there a standard reference that we can use for ensuring food defense during transport? Yeah, of course. Uh, um, who is interested, who can send me an email. Um, you will find also on our website things. And we are now developing these standards together with the Association of the Food Inspectors of Germany so that it should be very important in the future that there is a harmonizing between the different producers. Each producer, of course, when they are certified by IFS, BRC, FSS 22000, whatever, all these uh, certification schemes says the companies, the producers has something to do and to develop things under food defense. And then there is an idea what they can do. And how they can do is uh, the question of themselves. They, are, they can decide, but the transport means to connect the different producers, cleaning stations, logistic companies together. And we are working on that to harmonize, to synchronize these different users in the supply chain. And only when they are synchronized and, and harmonized, then these can be connected good together. Yeah, thanks. Um, Heather, we will send you a copy of the presentation afterwards with the recording and the certificate. Question from Guilia. How can we ensure ocean containers are cleaned and no fraud contamination? There is a safety seal, but do major shipping lines have a certification on cleaning their containers? No, they, they haven't. Of course, that is one of the weak point also that these uh, overseas containers are cleaned by everybody who's thinking what is <laughs> the cleaning meaning. Uh, so everybody has this private standard or at the end of the day, brush it and then it's fine. And there is no understanding about the sensitive of hygiene and that is one of the new guidelines what we have under production in the moment that we formed a guideline for the cooling and uh, refrigerated trucks and refer container and overseas containers. So if somebody is interested to bring you in, we are very happy to hear from you and uh, to, to hear from you your knowledge so that we can form together this uh, new guideline for that. Okay, a uh, question from Edwin. Is there a digital tracking system that can provide a tamper-free assurance? Um, please say it again, Simon, I have a... Uh, sorry, uh, is there a digital tracking system that can provide a tamper-free assurance? Yeah, it's absolutely, we have developed that. That is the Enfit by Vision blockchain technology, where it's possible, of course, we have... Um, it looks like this here. Oh, sorry. Where, where is it? This is the identification number. You can see it's GID, Global Item ID. That is stick on a transport unit. It can be a container, IBC, road tanker, whatever. And then we enter also a digital twin with all the technical details. How many chambers, how many tubes, how many valves, wherever. We can also add a digital seal plan how many seals are needed, where they are located, and we can temper-free scan the new NFIT seals what we have developed. Of course, I showed have <laughs> everything with me. <laughs> they have a scan, they have a company ID and a serial number, and this can be scanned by smartphone and can be temper-free transferred to the receiver. And the receiver can also scan it can uh, see the digital plan, how many seals were are located, so that everything match without all these human errors about reading, understanding, and writing. And if somebody is interested, send me an email. I can we can show you this. We can make a short digital uh, movement around this, make a video call, and then we can show how that works. And you can enter from all over the world. It's uh, working around the world, the globus. What we have all only to need is an internet. And you see, Simon, yeah. today, when the internet connection is lost, 
then there's nothing working. <laughs> <laughs> Back to paper. Uh, Rick raised, what is the required number of previous loads hauled in the USA? In the USA, I can't, can't say. I can say only in Europe, but in Europe, uh, there are many uh, US companies like Cargill or Mars or something like this. They wanted the last three previous loads. And okay. with, this, when, with this digital system, it's also absolutely temper free to show the last previous three previous loads. Why? The producer who does the loading, he enters the information about the product and the receiver of the product, he verified, okay, the one said I have loaded milk powder, the receiver said, yes, I've got a milk powder. And then I said that it's the smallest um, blockchain uh, system with three parties. When the loader and the unloader says this was milk powder, it's uh, not easy then for the transport company to say it was uh, something uh, different, of course. So they are protected okay. by them. And this is also uh, protected in the blockchain. And this information cannot be manipulated later. Okay. Uh, question from Miguel. So, for example, for bulk products susceptible for listeria, how to control this pathogen in reefers? Mm. It's a bit <laughs> <laughs> so how to control uh listeria pathogens in, in reefers i suppose that is that a bit out of scope uh, of this no i i can't i can't tell it of course i must say sorry for that i cannot really answer this question of course i can only say what we can do uh, to to remove contaminations but i cannot uh, say yeah. from my knowledge uh, how does Maybe another question, please. <laughs> okay, no worries. Um, question from May. How would you handle when custom and board protection remove the original seal and put a new CBD seal, but did not document that information anywhere on the paperwork? So yeah, of course, yeah. Then you can say <laughs> away is away and change to something what is not on the plan means you can't accept this product that is the reason often that when a driver enters to a cleaning station that is really one of the weakest point he he tells the cleaning stations uh, please give me 28 seals and the cleaning station cannot check does he need 28 or maybe only 20 whatever and they hand out this 28 and maybe all the drivers, when you are, I, I'm talking often to drivers and I ask them, do you have some uh, service uh, seals or so on? And then they show me the package of red, blue, <laughs> white seals and say, that is only for safety. When I miss the seal, I can uh, go to my right side here and have another seal and put it on. The receiver will not uh, realize what is going on. <laughs> he is happy when there's a seal. Wow. True. Um, question from Justice, uh, where are the serial numbers on the seals stored on the COA of the product being received? Now, that is very strange, of course, the, the seal numbers, the ID numbers of the seals, uh, every, every company or every cleaning stations started often when they are by the seals from the seals producers said, okay, I need 10,000 seals, start with the number 00001, and then it's going serial up, yeah? And it's no identification of who is the, the owner of the seals or he has bring it in. That is the reason that we are put here now on these new seals. We make it at first scannable by smartphone. On the other hand, we have also a producer or cleaning stations number, an ID, a unique ID, together with the serial seals. And both is then stored in the digital system. And then we have no possibility of manipulation or, or, or mistakes. Yeah, I will not say that everything is a manipulation. Often is it mistakes in reading, writing, understanding. And that is completely away.
Okay. Uh, next question from Friesen. Will a wash ticket reciprocate for the record of previous loads? Um, please yeah, say one pants. Please say it. Say uh, uh, will a wash ticket reciprocate for the record of previous loads? <laughs> yeah, that is an interesting question, of course. Um, you will find often on these called cleaning documents, for example, as I show you, that is different to, to our ENFIT certificates, but it's uh, common and uh, we are working on that, that it's not longer common. Um, there is often written uh, last three loadings by information of the driver. Maybe sunflower oil, sunflower oil, sunflower oil. And then I know <laughs> from my experience in my discussion with logistic companies and so on, that is often a fake. Of course, there are somebody who said to the driver, okay, make it easy. Of course, I know when I arrived at the next loading site and they have and a lot of loading sites have so-called not as uh, accepted products list. Why? These not non-accepted products are often products where the producer has made some bad experience. And when he has made bad experience, maybe with a previous load as a chocolate, then he put it into his list. But for the logistic company is a big problem, of course, when they have a clean truck and will get the next load. And in this load is the product, the last product, what he has transported, then the loader will say, no, oh, I cannot accept this truck. That is the reason that we know that there is a lot of manipulation about these information. What is the last three loads? The logistic company is under pressure to make a business with the transport. It's not acceptable for him to, to move to the loader and then to, to get a an, an, an way out without a loading. So that is the reason that they manipulate. We said, this bad experience is only depended by a bad cleaning. And when this is adjust that the producers uh, are waiting for a good and proper cleaning under the ENFIT standards, they can be sure that it's independent. Is it an allergen, a GMO, a chocolate or whatever? Clean is clean. But for a chocolate, you must have more to do than maybe to clean an orange juice or something like this. And that must be come into the understanding of all the parties of the supply chain, that these works directly together. And then it's uh, normal and you can serve each transport container in that way that he is clean when you have done enough service for to clean it. Okay. Um, I think <laughs> there's more questions than we're going to get through, uh, Hans, but keep going for a couple of minutes mm -hmm. um no problem okay is there this is from perry is there a biosafety cleaning scheme for poultry or livestock um no that i can't uh, say for poultry livestock uh, of course we i know that in spain there's a new law what is dealing with livestock or animal, live animal transportation and what is to doing with this transport units. There's a new law and we are working together there with our ENFIT representer in Spain, it's Lila Borin, and she is very deeply involved in that. And we understand also, and this regulation should become also in the next time to, to Germany or to Europe, that there is a special requirement for that to make sure that no contamination is around uh, other animals and so on and so on. That is a specific case and I cannot say too much in the moment for that. Okay. Um, question from Louise. Louise, uh, do, do seals have to be metal when transporting product to customer IRB requirements? Um, I have a break in the line, Simon. Of course, I have see, heard something about the seals are metal, and then I lost you. Yeah. Yeah. So, what what's the requirement for seals? What what uh, should they be made of? Does it have to be metal? Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, that is a, a good question. Of course, 
Um, a seal cannot protect against a manipulation, independent is it metal or plastic. The seal should only show if a manipulation has been done. And for that, it's completely enough to have a plastic seal. They are cheaper. And remember, the seals must be removed away when after the cleaning, the truck arrived at the next loading site. And when you then use this metal seals, it's impossible. Then you need a, a, a tool for that to, to have it. And that is very complicated. So our experience is the seal must be make sure that you can see when it has been done manipulation. And for that is a, a plastic seal completely enough. But it should be detected, scannable, uh, transferred by these blockchain system, what we have developed and so on. And then you, it's free of all these tempering and then mistakes. Okay. A uh, couple of questions from Christina. Is CTPAP, does that stand for Customs Trade and Partnership Against Terrorism? I lost you again, Simon, please. Okay, sorry. So the acronym CTPAP, is that Customs Trade and Partnership Against Terrorism? It's in, it's in the sidebar in that black box, if you can read it. CTPAP. I have never heard about that. Well, what? I, I All right. Christina was just asking if it, if CTPAP stands for Customs Trade and Partnership Against Terrorism. Ah, okay. I, I have no. It's I, okay. I have no idea. So sorry for that, Christina. I, I can't tell you. Of course, I know yeah. only the regulation of FDA and what is going on now here in Europe about after our uh, these uh, sabotage on these pipelines and uh, train systems in Germany and so on, that we are now discussing this task completely new and see that there are so many gaps inside. That's the reason for that, that we are talking about that. Okay. Okay, uh, final question, because we've run quite a bit over. Um, from Luis, uh, how would you handle the risk of a new tanker? Would they do a top tier wash with Kosha? Uh, Kosha is a complex cleaning process. That means uh, not only a top tier um, cleaning, it means also the right temperature to have to steam after the cleaning and so on. And you will find all this information about the Kosha cleaning and high light cleaning in our web page. Of course, when you click on cleaning codes, then you get all these different types of the cleaning. And when you have some details question, you can send me an email and ask me directly, please. Brilliant. Okay. On that note, I think we will uh, leave it. Brilliant, Hans. Thanks very much for your detailed presentation yeah. and uh, lots of great questions and answers given. So thanks for your time today and we'll... Uh, have a nice weekend and we'll see you on the next one. Yes, it was a great pleasure for me. Thank you to all around the world. It was uh, nice to be uh, with you and to get uh, hopefully some impression about you. Of course, thank you, Simon, for this well done organization. And you see, when you miss computer connection, nothing is working today. <laughs> but oh, yeah, it went well in the end. We, we got there in the end. So thanks very much, everybody, for attending. In. I've loaded the certificate in the sidebar. I'll follow up it in a little while with the slides and the recording, and we'll see you all on the next one. Have a great weekend. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye. bye, -bye.